Hi, Robert Anthony here for Audio Tuts Plus. Studio One version 2.5 is quickly becoming my go-to DAW in my studio. If you're new to Studio One, or if you're using the free version that Personas has so kindly made available, I want to show you how you can quickly set up your MIDI controller inside of Studio One if it is not in the list of preset devices. To add a MIDI controller, you can select Studio One, Preferences, External Devices, and click Add. If your controller is in the list of preset devices here on the left, all you have to do is click to select it and hit Add, and all the knobs, sliders, and transport controls will be automatically mapped for you. However, if like me, you have a MIDI controller that is not in the list of preset devices, you can quickly set up a new device and map all the controls once, and the mapping will be saved within the new device settings. I have the M-Audio Oxygen 49 version 3 MIDI controller, but as you can see here, it's not available to select in the M-Audio folder. So what I need to do is set up a new controller and assign the various controls and transport buttons. I'm going to select new keyboard here at the top and give my keyboard a descriptive name. You can select which MIDI channels your controller will send on, but if you only have one controller, it's best to leave them all selected. Next, you want to select your controller from the Receive From drop-down here. My MIDI controller only sends MIDI signal, so Studio One won't be able to send MIDI information back to my device, so I'll leave this set to None. Click OK, and I have connected my MIDI controller to Studio One. Now, I need to map the various controls in order to use them properly inside of Studio One. To do this, I'll create a new project. And down here in the mixer, there is a button to show external devices. Clicking this will open the external devices pane with a list of all your external controllers hooked up to your computer. Clicking on the device you just set up will open the MIDI assignments window for that device. If you click MIDI Learn here in the upper left, the button will turn blue and Studio One will begin listening for incoming MIDI messages. When you move a knob or fader or press a button on your controller, it will show up here in a list. I suggest doing this in some kind of sequential logical order, just so things aren't random order. So I'm going to go in order and move all of my rotary knobs. And as you can see, as I do, they are showing up here in the MIDI assignments window. I'll move all my faders now. And finally, I'll click all of my transport buttons. And now, what I can do is come in here and assign my controller. I'll assign the transport controls first. So I'm going to go down the list. First click to make sure I'm assigning the right parameter, as you can see by the little red LED. So this is the looping button on my controller. The toggle loop on and off is actually assigned to the backslash key on the numeric keypad. So I like to assign the transport loop button to loop the selected region in the arrange window. This will jump the loop region to whatever I have selected, which comes in handy when you're producing your song. Next is the playhead back button. Now keep in mind that Studio One has a playhead scrubbing feature. If you assign it to this button, then what will happen is it will start scrubbing forward and you won't actually be able to stop unless you click stop on the screen transport here. You want to assign these to forward bar and rewind bar. That way you can click and advance or rewind a bar at a time. Next I'll assign the stop button. And again on this one, you want to assign it to toggle start. So you can click and it will be able to start and stop the playhead. And finally, I'll assign record.
If you want to make another global assignment to the faders and knobs, you can. But I personally like to keep them unassigned so I can assign them to various parameters when I'm producing a song. I will, however, change the faders so that Studio One knows that they are faders and not rotary knobs. You do this by right-clicking and selecting which you want it to be. And that's that. Your assignments are saved with the new device in the external devices settings. So now, as you can see, the transport controls are working. I can start, stop, go forward and backwards in bars, and punch in and out of recording. I hope this helps you get up and running if you need to assign your MIDI controller manually like I did. This is Robert Anthony for Audio Tuts Plus. Thanks for watching.